Hi, my name is Honey Ogunde, and you're back on another episode of Analyze This. And today I'm hanging out with my co-host, man about town, economist, sometimes rapper, but always debonair, Mr. Tunji Andrews. Uh... And today we're going to be chatting about why businesses fail. Um, so the thing about when you're an entrepreneur in Nigeria, you run a business, you always hear about the success stories, you always hear about the guys who are doing it big, but no one really talks about failure. Like failure is the thing that nobody really wants to go into. Um, but today we're going to be breaking it down on the show. We're going to be talking about why businesses fail, how you can avoid some of the common pitfalls with failure, and just why don't we talk about it more in Nigeria. Tunji, you've had a couple of businesses fail. What happened there? Um, I think I probably wasn't ready, mm. you know, I, I, and, and I mean, failure is part of the journey. It's just that in Nigeria, we've had this in scenario where for a number of years, decades, a couple of decades, we've, we've been indoctrinated with that, um, you know, failure is not your portion in Jesus' name, you know, and, um, you know, pastors, motivational speakers. But, so it, failure kind of looks like something that is religious or a, a curse. So if you say you, you failed, people say things like, uh, what's wrong? wrong? Yeah. Or uh, you yourself start asking yourself questions like, have I sinned? Is God angry with me? You know, is it my village people at work? And, you know, all those kind of things. But, um, but sometimes it's just you're not doing it's something just, right. Yeah. It, it's just you not doing something right. It might just be that you were not, it's not the right time for the business to thrive. Um, it's, it's could be a lot of things. It could just be that government, it could just be that life itself is not prepared for you to, to, you know, to make it's it work. Like them, yeah. yeah. So, so sometimes it's best to just, you know, take it as it comes, but failure is part of the journey. Yeah. I mean, I've had a different sort of experience because I remember I'm sort of a perfectionist. So I always mm -hmm. like everything to go well. Yeah. I started my business. Fashba was like the first time that I've had to deal with failure on like several fronts because sometimes mm -hmm. We'll do things and it just doesn't work out. Or, you know, I've had to struggle with something just not working out in the way that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, that was really, really hard because then I took it personally like, oh, yeah. I, maybe I'm not good enough or yeah. I'm not smart enough. But then in the end, I started to just embrace failure and really learn from it. Like sometimes it's just there to teach you a lesson, to make you stop in your tracks and fix mm -hmm. something and continue to go on. So now I'm kind of like an advocate of people just failing fast. I'm like, fail fast, fail fast learn your lesson, and, and move, move on. on. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are people who are more experienced than you in the business who, there's sometimes it's just competition that is designed to kill you. I, I was, I did a business one time and I, it was retail. I know you and, have many businesses. You no, know, and I went around, you know, breaking ground, getting the retail stores to be able to take my stuff. And some dude was just chilling. He was just chilling, was watching me do everything, break all the grounds, you know, do all the groundwork. And by the time I'd, you know, broken ground properly and yeah. I was thinking, okay, now it's time to sit down and eat my booty. This guy came in with stuff that booty. was, no, it's, uh, yeah. 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 It's, it came in with stuff that was half my landing cost from China. Yeah. And basically kicked me out of that. So I had a warehouse full of, um, retail products that I couldn't sell. Yeah. You know, nobody would buy them for me. And, yeah. and basically that, kill that business. Right. So I was in debt. I was, so many things happened. So, I mean, that wasn't me not getting ready. Getting ready. It was just that somebody was designed to kill me. Yeah. So now I'm a bit wiser. I'll, I'll, you know, cover my business plan a bit more, you know, go with a little bit more uh, uh, stealth. But yeah, it, it just, it just teaches you to be better the next time. Yeah. I have a different view. I always think that competition doesn't necessarily kill you. I think that it's your, sometimes it's a lack of planning that we have as entrepreneurs not mm -hmm. to envisage that competition is going to come in and, and build around that. Do you mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. the competition happens and then of course your business is ruined. Mm -hmm. But from the get go, if maybe you have made better plans and thought about the what if. So I always mm -hmm. like to tell entrepreneurs, what ifs, yeah. think of the worst case scenario. And I know in Nigeria, we're very optimistic. We're like, oh, yeah, it's, we, it's what happened in Jesus. Yes, and I, I'm a big believer in God and everything he does. But I also think you need to plan as a true, business person. True. You need to do your research. You need to do your worst case scenario mm -hmm. and still be able to be okay with your business if the worst case happens. Ap happens. Right? I mean, it's, it's, it's always the reality. I mean, we've seen all kinds of stories where people set up factories based on a government policy, believing that, oh, you know, this has been banned from coming to Nigeria, so let me go and set up this factory. And all of a sudden, government reverses the policy and you had millions and millions and millions invested into invested that business. Already, yes. And you just wonder how you're going to come back from that. And that's you, that business is done. You're, coming back from it is almost a no-no. But, I mean, it's just... It's, it's just one of those things that happen. But what I always say is that after you failed on one particular business, you 
it's hard that you fail on that same thing again. Yeah. So you become an them. expert on that thing. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times I prefer to listen to someone who's failed a number of times compared to somebody who succeeded and not failed at all because he doesn't see a lot of the pitfalls. He might have just been one of those um, unicorn successes. True. Or like the guy that has failed like 17 times, he will tell you, ah, don't try that. Are you just beginning yourself right now? Really? That yeah. is me. That you is me. Yeah. That is yeah. me. No, just, see, just, I have failed a yourself. number of just times. That, I have yeah, failed a number. People should listen to you instead of listening to me. See. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. No. But I mean, on, on, on the real though, to keep it, to keep it yeah. real 100, I think that, you know, it is true that learning from multiple failures does help you become a better entrepreneur. I think that one of the most common reasons that we see people failing is that they just don't have the experience, right? Mm -hmm. Or they don't have, they haven't put in the research in terms of getting the business started. Exactly. You don't, you don't know where your market is. You don't know who's going to buy from you. You don't know how much the buyers are willing to pay for your product. You don't product. understand the competitive landscape. I'm telling you, you don't even you don't know even what, understand government. You, you don't know what government. Regulation is in that space. I mean, you, sometimes you could just bring stuff in, and um, the regulatory agencies, NAFDAQ, and the rest would be like, "Dude, who said you should bring it in?" No, I thought that one like for real on a real experience. <laughs> I was, for seriously, it's so, and sometimes it's not always entrepreneurial fault, right? So yeah. I've had a case where we had brought in goods from abroad to sell, and mm -hmm. the time the flash still used to buy and sell goods, mm -hmm. right? And we brought it in, and the border was just closed for that period, that Christmas period. Wow. And it was like festive, so I've done my analysis, like, I've done my projections, pa, 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 I'm going to sell it's about this, to be Christmas, I'm going to do pa, pa. I'm about to go home happy. And then the government just closes the border. There's nothing, you, like, mm. th there's no way to plan against that, like, to mitigate it. I guess, maybe now, in terms of mitigation, I would have started bringing the goods earlier, and not waiting until, like, the peak time. Peak when time when so I would never do that again. Back, back but that home. was really hard time for, for myself and a lot of other entrepreneurs, because people just had their goods stuck at the border. And, and some things were not happening. Yeah, and things are just losing value. And nobody's day. going to compensate you for that. That's yeah, even exactly. the worst part. They're... And you're going to pay demorage fees. I'm sure you did that. No, and then, so, yeah, and if you're bringing in something perishable, you're it's... just like, what Watching, wow, like, and, wow, and it can wow. be really, really heartbreaking. And I'm not sure that I have like the real answer for how you mitigate against government policy changing because we know that sometimes that just happens frequently. But I think it's just. To, I think I, I, I honestly just tell people, you know, don't plan around them. No, but what if in that case you brought it in and it, you know, and they changed the policy on you? How do you plan against that? So I think in that you case, know that. don't put all your eggs in one, <laughs> one basket, basket yeah. really. Like, yeah. if you're going to start something, start small, scale it out, you know. And and I think that we as young people as well need to look more closely into how we influence government policy and regulation to make sure that our voices are heard. I keep saying that. Because we don't do that enough, apart mm -hmm. from like talking on Twitter like some people. We don't want to mention no names here. But, but I mean, I think another reason we're seeing a couple of businesses fail is lack of capital. And I know we moan about this all the time, but do you think that's a real issue of why businesses fail? I, I don't, I think, I mean, lack of capital is a genuine concern, but um, a lot of the time you also find out that um, what we have in Nigeria is that we don't have a lot of lenders who understand how to lend to uh, mm -hmm. startups. And then the people that lend, know how to lend to startups, that specialized departments in some banks, microfinance banks, they're not enough to be able to cater to all the SMEs we have. So it's, it's a, it's a scenario where, um, demands, a uh, demand exceeds supply by far. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the, the, the lack of cash capital will always remain. So I try to tell startups, start small, mm -hmm. uh, whatever industry you're in, start in the value chain because people want to always be the one manufacturing. You can start as the person doing the retail part of the business because every business has a retail end. You can be the one at the retail end. Then when people trust you, you can then you scale up. up the then chain, you can yeah, move, sure. move up the chain. So please, you know, start as with as little risk as possible mm -hmm. and learn the business. You know, this always happens to me. I get um, calls a lot of the time. People saying things like, I have just been paid two million naira. I want to start a business. And a lot of people think two million, ten million, even sometimes a hundred million is big money. Please, a hundred million is big money. But yes. I know you're a big guy, so it's not... But well, a hundred million naira can reduce very quickly. You but if pay, you don't know you what you're doing, you pay rent. Yeah, you pay true. rent for you pay rent eight million naira. You no, but stock if you don't know what 21. you're doing and you don't have a good plan, a hundred million will go by really, really quickly. Quickly, and we see this a lot in the technology industry, especially in Nigeria. So people will go out and raise huge sums of I'm money, in the you. millions of dollars, and the company still struggles. They don't get the customers they need. Um, then you know, and it doesn't do well. And mm -hmm. businesses actually go on to die. And so. I, I've learned, like in my entrepreneurial journey, that 
money doesn't always solve the it problem, never right? Solves everything. But it can be a real bottleneck for you as an SME. Yeah, and I can. think one of the key things that I've learned about cash, about um, managing financing the startup is it's really all about understanding your cash flow. Mm-hmm. And I've had to learn that the other way, you know, the hard way as well. I like have it, too. Yeah, it's about just making sure that you understand cash flow and analysis. What is well. going in, what, what is, is coming, coming out, in, what, what, what is, is your cost? Out. Exactly. Understanding the unit economics of your business, so you. how much you're producing. And I think that that's another reason why people go out, which is leads me up to pricing. Like pricing mm-hmm. is really key. And that's really just understanding the very granular details of the structure, pricing structure or the cost structure of your yeah, business. Yeah. So understanding how much it takes for you to produce something and how much you need to make on top of it, because I see a lot of people just charge arbitrarily. Like, like let's say, like in fashion, they just look at it and be like, "Oh, this okay, top should this be three thousand. Just be four thousand naira." But how much did it cost you to land that top in Nigeria? If you're manufacturing, how long much does it cost me to mm-hmm. produce the item, put buttons? So, at fashion, I'm gonna price everything. I'm gonna get my cost down to my buttons, to my diesel cost, to my employee cost. Like all those things are, are, are put into the co- final yeah, cost. They're co- even yeah. the, the time for me. Exactly. To think about, you know, to think about a design or, you know, all those are cost components and you have to adequately price for them. Otherwise, so, you'll go out of business I mean, the, the sincere truth about it is that entrepreneurs f- trying to follow costs, there are free um, software on, on the internet which can help you track your costing, mm-hmm. every single input so that you can track it. To and you need to understand margins as margins. well. Margins. I mean, it's, it's a very difficult. It, it sounds technical, but it has to be technical. Yeah. But again, I've seen people understand it. The guys in the pure water business, I've met a couple of them that pay people based on, oh, um, every bag sold, this guy has five naira. Every bag sold, this guy has one naira. So I kind of feel yeah. this guy has a yeah. full understanding of his of his cost. But you guys, though, uh, let us know what you think. Let's go to the streets and find out what your thoughts are there. Businesses fail because of poor planning. Before you start a business, you must think about the people you're about to serve, make your researches. People just wake up from their bed and say, okay, because A is doing well in this business, let me go into it without no research. For some people, it might work, but out of 100 people, I would say like for 2%, it might work that way. But you need to do your research, you need to plan before you do any business. That is why most people most people will go into a business today, tomorrow you see them in another business, next tomorrow in another business, because it's all poor planning. Well, most Nigerian entrepreneurs don't have a succession planning. And this is because uh, most people take their businesses as a survivor um, empire where they survive with their family. And also there is issue of trust. The level of trust in Nigeria, to an average Nigeria, is not... Most employers don't trust you know, handling their business empire to their management team. So as a result of that, when the, uh, the, the originator of the idea dies, the business dies automatically. Um, actually, business doesn't fail in Nigeria. It depends, I think you're hearing me, it depends on our government. Now they will say we have what we call substandard goods. And then I still believe those governments are the one allowing those people to import those substandard goods. Had it been, they will lay their emphasis on those ones. At least when they bring it, they will ban it. But at times, they will take bribe and bring it into Nigeria. So the, uh, the, the final consumer will not buy it. At the end of the day, they will return it. It is not good. All right. Uh, first thing first, that why businesses fail. One, management. Two, when it's, uh, business is just generally one man, a one man businesses, and he generally does not uh, have people to manage it. He must create different departments so that those people who are in charge of admin, those in charge of accounts, should be in place in a business. But when you are just one man person, you, know, you are the one controlling all your affairs, all business, your business will fail. And secondly, spending money more than what you should do kills business too. If you don't, money is meant to be invested back, not to be spent on your personal property. The business failure in Nigeria is the government policy that is responsible for the failures of business in Nigeria. Um, the policies are not favorable. The power failure, inability to have stable power supply, the cost of running business in Nigeria is exorbitant. These are things that lead to business failures in Nigeria. First, let me talk on government side. 
No infrastructure. No infrastructure. On the other side, we as Nigerians generally we are very dishonest. We are very dishonest. If I come to you and ask for money that I want to do this business, the way I will get rid of you is what I'm going to be looking for. So that I don't pay back the money. If you have all that joined together with government misbehavior, there's no way. It, there's no way to work. So insincerity and lack of infrastructure. So as we heard, there's lots of reasons why businesses fail. But what I really want to discuss today is, are there things that we can do to stop or prevent failure? So one of the things I think is, from my experience, is like better planning, I think, can help sometimes. Like you talked about competition, but I think if you plan better and you have like a really good understanding of your competitive landscape, you might be able to predict or anticipate what the competition could do. So I, I honestly want to be... Pessimistic. I'm naturally pessimistic. Uh, um, yeah, we've noticed it's, that. It's, um, I think you can reduce the risk of failure, mm -hmm. but you can't actually stop failure. Failure is something that will happen irrespective of what you do. I think you, sh and if you are not ready to go through failure, then you should not be an entrepreneur. You should not start a business. You should not start a business because there are chances are that you will most likely fail than succeed. Okay, so let's play the other way. So you find yourself having failed or yeah. having not accomplished what you thought you would do, like mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you should do to get out of that situation very quickly then? First of all, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. That, that's something you... And one of the things I say to every entrepreneur is that you must... And I think this is an overflogged word or it's become a cliche, passion. Mm -hmm. Passion is not just something that you get from a seminar. It is something that you must have inside of you. Somebody was telling me today and she said she, said she, she doesn't know the kind of business she, she should start. I said, don't worry. It will come to you when yeah, it's, 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 it will come to you on its own. The need will be so glaring and it will be so clear to your mind when it eventually comes that you will know what it is you want to do. As in, in such clarity that you will know this is what I need to be doing. That's called purpose. You know, that's yeah. purpose. Exactly. So yeah. it's not it's not something that, you know, you go and learn from MBA, then you now come out from the MBA and say, no, this is what I'm going to do. It has to be passion. And because passion at the end of the day is what is going to drive you past the yeah. initials. And I think, to, I mean, to succeed as an gaps. entrepreneur, you have to have that passion. You have yeah. to have that that purpose mm -hmm. you have to have a plan of and it also has to be the right time right? Also be, so right time you have to know your market you that's have to... like the combination of everything like yeah. i in my entrepreneurial journey i've seen that it, many times it made more sense for me to not go, go on, on than to, to go on true. but that's where that sort of can do attitude and that passion and that just i couldn't just imagine just closing down shop mm -hmm. was you know was stronger than everything that was going wrong mm -hmm. because trust me things have gone wrong in ways that i haven't been able to imagine and when people see you and when they see you know my instagram or they see my twitter or they see press it's always talking about the successes but trust me i have been through a lot of difficult times in my business and the reason that i'm sitting here today to be able to discuss it is just because I didn't, didn't give up. You didn't quit. That's the only Kept reason. Kept going. There is nothing special about it. If it was yeah. going to be easy, everybody, everybody would be, be doing, doing it. it. I mean, everybody would be doing it. But just in Nigeria, I feel as if everybody's doing it. But, you know. but not everybody's succeeding. That's, yeah, that's so. the thing about it. Please, there, there, there's a movie on Steve Jobs. I think it's one of the easiest examples to show what mad passion can get you. He, everybody felt he was crazy. Everybody felt he was going to fail. In fact, people were betting on him to fail. You know how that feels for you to come to work every day yeah. and you know everybody is expecting it, you to fail. Or looking at you like you're crazy. Like you're crazy, well, yeah. Well, you know, I've, I've, I've heard in some entrepreneurial circles that if everyone's looking at you like you're crazy, the chances are you're, you're probably crazy. doing something, yeah. right? And it's true, in my case, yeah. like when I started fashion, it was like online fashion. Like, just would never buy fashion online. People are not online. Why are you on the internet? Just open a store or just, you know, you know just go the traditional way or, you know, at, at every point, even when I started in fact, we're like, oh, why is that? That's getting more difficult. You're getting deeper into the value chain. But you almost have to be a little bit of a mad person with your conviction that you have to believe it in order not to become a failure. Because I'm telling if you. everybody was doing the same thing you're doing, then you're definitely doing something and, wrong. And, you know, one of the good things is that those those naysayers also push you on. Because yeah, now do. you're telling yourself, ah, I cannot fail. Yeah. They must not. I don't, I don't, I'm not even a big believer yeah. in all these haters, <laughs> in my haters. No, but me, I, 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 just, feel, I feel the haters also push you on. I love the haters. I and, don't even feel that. I just, I'm so full. Focused in 
between what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I don't even see or hear. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how I am on 100. Like, if I even feel like someone is trying to hate, I'm probably going to take it the other way. I'm like, oh, maybe they're having a bad day. Because I'm just so focused True. on not trying what to fail doing, yeah. and staying in my own lane. Mm -hmm. Which is another reason I think also, you know, we see business feeling like you start one business today, you're not here, the other business is doing one. Well, you want to go and do another you one. You not jump. Yeah. And, you know, you need to really stay focused. So I think some of the points we discussed, really just staying focused. Staying focused, being passionate about what you're doing, having a plan. Learning fast from you your know, failure. And also, if you can, apprentice, apprenticeize learn. or apprenticeship or learn can, somewhere. Yeah, you have to go from place to place, learn, see people fail because mm -hmm. it's very key. Once mm -hmm. you see people fail at something, you know how painful it and is. And I think we need to normalize the culture of failing at failure. Nigeria. It's not that bad. In America, like you fail, you, you raise $5 million, you do a business, it fails. And then you come out, you write a blog, and someone gives you $10 million to go try the next business. business. Like, I'm telling you, now you fail. You are closer to success. You are qualified to, to Yeah, exactly. But in Nigeria, we look down on it. We even we do it from it. kindergarten, secondary school, where you, get it where you get medals for coming last in class, participation medals. And for me, I think it's... Let's, let's stop. Yeah. Let's stop. Let's stop trying to shame failure. It's not a bad thing. It, it is part of the process. From every failure, you can definitely learn. In fact, something. the reason why I'm here today, like Honey said, is because of my failures. All right, guys, we'd like to hear what your thoughts are um, about failure, basically. Let us know your failure stories. It'll, it'll be great to share. We'll share some of ours with you so that you can share some of yours with us also. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, everywhere, um, at Tunji Andrews, and also... You can reach me at Honey Ogunde on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and also on YouTube, where I share some of my entrepreneurial stories and failures. Well, also follow Ndani TV at Ndani TV, and do not forget to use the hashtag Analyze This. Till next time, guys. Have a great week.